Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of How to Live the Podcast. Our names are Jess and Steph Dadon, and we are very excited to be coming to you on this beautiful Monday. So we have, what have we been up to the last week? I don't even know. Mm, I don't even know either. I feel like we just got back from Easter and like we've just been like cramming in the office. Totally. We've been getting a lot done, having a lot of exciting meetings. We actually lectured to a group of students at RMIT last week, which was really fun. True. And we're preparing for next week. We're heading to Sydney for MBFWA and we're doing a bit of a trade show with Tubes there. So we've just been like all hands on deck for that, but it's really exciting stuff. So that's awesome. For sure. So the other day we were kind of brainstorming what this In Conversation episode was going to be about. And... We had some ideas. We had some great ideas. We had some great ideas and we had some bad ideas as well, actually. True. What were some of our bad ideas? Do you remember? Um, Well, they were kind of hilarious and I feel like they would have made for a good episode, but it was like just a full episode on like the most humiliating things that have ever happened to us as How to Live, like me falling on my face at Fashion Week in front of a very famous fashion photographer. Uh, uh, Uh-uh-uh, don't spoil it yet. We might still do that episode. (laughs) And we really started to discuss how we haven't been posting on social media in quite a while now. And if you haven't seen, go check out our Instagram at how to live. It was about two months ago, around the same time we were launching this podcast. And we posted on Instagram for the first time in like, I want to say six months. Yeah, like we posted here and there, maybe like once every few months. But like, I think it had probably been... I want to say like a full year to two years that we really have kind of been resisting that like posting on Instagram in that like really traditional way. We're like very active on stories. We find that really easy to keep up with. We love being authentic on there. It feels really natural for us. But then the second we go to post anything on Instagram, we're like, uh, so much social media anxiety. Like we don't want to do it. Even if we have an awesome photo, like we'll come up with a reason why we don't want to post it. And then we just don't. So when we were going to launch our podcast, we were like, right, well, we're going to have to start posting on Instagram again because this is how we're going to promote the podcast. This is how we're going to tell people about it. But we hadn't done it in such a long time that we were like, we feel like we owe it to our followers to kind of tell them where we've been and why we haven't been posting. It was just like a five minute really snappy video that we were just putting out there. We really didn't know how people were going to react to it. And like the minute that we posted it, it just seemed to like create this reaction inside of people that it really, really resonated with them. And they went, oh yeah, this is exactly how I've been feeling about Instagram over the last few years. And that was the thing we kind of realized that other people are feeling this social media anxiety too. They're just not really necessarily talking about it because everybody's like, you know, posting these crazy, amazing photos and, you know, posting a highlight reel, really. And it's affecting people. And we think it's something that's really important that we talk about. Yeah. And and it's interesting to hear it from a perspective from someone who just uses it for just uses Instagram for fun because us using Instagram as a business, we can tell you that like, yeah, we were putting out there all of this like really amazing, like bright, colorful content, but like it was draining our souls. Like that sounds dramatic, but that's literally how I felt after a while of us using this platform. So should we take it back to the beginning and talk a little bit about our Instagram journey and how it all began? Yeah, absolutely. So so when we launched um, How to Live, we actually launched as a blog. We launched way before Instagram was like even a thing, which is crazy to think about. So uh, when I was going over to visit Steph in Paris for Fashion Week, that was when a few of our friends had kind of been using the platform and we were like, oh, okay, like this looks cool. Maybe we should get on Instagram. And like our first photos were literally like, I remember one was of my hand, of some I actually think I'm wearing the exact same ring right now like it's kind of like this cool eye ring yeah um Brooke maybe Persich, I think is yeah the designer I think you're yeah right. and like they you know remember when Instagram had like that blur function where you would just like blur fo- the edges yeah like you'd focus on something little in the middle and then blur or like also it had that like black um border that you yes. would use and that- also I feel like our favorite filters filter was called Amaro 
Yeah, Amarillo. I think Amarillo still exists, but now if you use it, it kind of makes the picture look weird. But at the time, it was like all we knew. Yeah, so like in the beginning, we loved putting content out there because it was just all like, you know, it was what we were already doing. It was just like a really great compliment to our blog. So we would just upload our blog photos, but then also like behind the scenes, kind of like outfit, like closer up outfit details and fashion shows and food posts and stuff like that. And they were really authentic because at the time, Instagram wasn't a thing that people had been doing. So there was no like, this is how you should post on Instagram. And we just saw it as, oh, this is moments in our life. Let's snap this, let's snap that. There wasn't much thought put into it. It was just whatever I'm doing. Yeah, and there was no kind of like benchmark of, I need to get this many likes or I want to get this many followers. It was just like literally like, we had like the purest of intentions when we were kind of signing up to the platform. So I remember like when we grew to a thousand followers, we were like, holy crap, we grew to a thousand followers. That's insane. And I actually remember, so we launched our Instagram in September and I remember December we were in Hawaii and I remember we posted this photo each holding up a hand, like showing five fingers because we just hit 5,000 followers. And that was like huge. We were so excited. We just couldn't believe it and this idea of other people following you and watching you was just brand new yeah and and really really exciting like we really loved it at that point and like definitely we're becoming like super addicted to it and I think at the time we didn't even know it but we were like yes just more just more and so like in the beginning yeah like Steph said we would post when we hit those benchmarks but then I remember like it got to a point where like it was obviously became never enough so we never really uploaded benchmark follower photos because it was just like we always wanted more 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 and this is actually something we've been speaking about recently because like as humans we kind of like set these goals for ourselves and then we never stop to celebrate those goals because by the time we've reached them we're already looking to the next goal and I actually reminded Jess that there was a goal that she'd set set recently that was like you know once we get this amount of once we sell this amount of things then I'm going to be happy and then we passed that and we just didn't even stop to celebrate it because we were already on to the, you know, the next big thing. Yeah. And I even, I hate that mentality anyway, because we do all do it, but it's like that mentality of like, if I have this, then I will feel that. And like, in reality, like exactly what you're saying, you feel no different when you hit that goal, you're just looking to the next thing and you always want more. So like, you know, that we can really take that and put it into anything, like the way that we're living our lives. We should really just try and enjoy the here and now and not get so caught up with like comparing and looking at other people and thinking, oh, I I want that and then I will be this. And also like celebrating our achievements as they happen and not constantly looking to the next thing. Totally. Stopping and being like, oh, this is really awesome. Like, you know, now for us when like, we get an a big article that somebody writes about us we're like oh cool but we didn't get an article on this thing you know rather yeah. than or just that person got three articles on that thing why did we only get one totally instead of just being like wow this is awesome we should stop we should celebrate this and that's actually something that we said that is that we're gonna start writing down our goals and that way we can know that when we do hit them we can stop and celebrate and just enjoy the moment rather than quickly looking at what's next. And we still haven't had that dinner for hitting that goal, by the way. We need to do that. True. That is a good reminder. We do need to do that. So, you know, we're kind of like going along, loving Instagram. Instagram's really fun. We're having a great time. And, and let's th- be clear, like we got a lot of opportunities coming out of it. You know, like we really built a lot of our brand on social media. We were some of the first people to start to get contacted by brands to be like, you know, we'll partner with you because you have an Instagram following. At the time, not a lot of brands had Instagram following, so they would look to us to access ours. So I think, yeah, in the beginning, like you said, you said that word innocent before, and I feel like it was so innocent and it was just like, oh, this is a way of building up a business. It wasn't really, we didn't see it becoming so much a part of our lives and of everybody's life at that point. Well, and I think also what was funny then was that brands also, like, because influencer I use it in in quotation marks but because that wasn't really such a thing brands didn't know how to work with influencers they didn't know how to treat you and we didn't know what we should or shouldn't be getting from them so it was a super interesting time in this industry where it was kind of like forging your own path or like 
you know, those, what are those books called where you're like, choose your own adventure, choose your own adventure. Exactly. Like we were just setting out and we didn't even know, like the first time someone contacted us and they wanted to pay us for something on Instagram, we were like, wow, sweet. We'll take whatever dollars you want. You know, it was just really, it was all very new. So I think it was a few years into our blog that I remember we were going to fashion week in Sydney. We were going to MBFWA, which is the same festival that we have coming up next week. And we were about to hit 100,000 followers. This was a huge deal for us. And we're on 99,000. We've been working really hard at it. We were really super excited to hit this big milestone. And do you remember this story? Because this was just like... Absolutely. This for me is just like everything that is wrong with social media and the culture it's kind of created. So we were at a show. We were sitting front row, which we thought was so cool. But that's like a whole other episode that we have to talk about. We were at Emma Mulholland's show. True. We were at Emma Mulholland. It was a great show. It was. And we're sitting there and this influencer sits down next to us and she says... She was, she was much younger than us. She said... And we didn't know her and she didn't know us. I'm like, that was fine. And she tells us that she's left school because her Instagram's really taking off and she's going to become an influencer. Oh my God, she left school. Yeah. She left high school. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's crazy. Isn't it crazy? And she was like, pulls out her phone and she has like something like three or 400,000 followers. Yeah, I don't even remember. And she said to us, oh, what's your brand called? And we said, oh, how to live. And at this point we're on 99K and we were so excited for this 100. It was coming soon. She pulls out her phone. She gets into how to live and she goes, oh my God, cute. You have 100K. That's so cute. That's literally what she said. That was how we found out we hit 100K. Oh and God. that was just like hilarious like it was really hilarious and like we left that show and like we laughed really hard and we were like that was the funniest way we (laughs) could have found out about this massive milestone that we've been working towards but also just like super kind of um reflective of where the industry was at that point because then at this point it had already started to turn and we were already feeling like a little bit funky about it and that was a thing was that like exactly what we're talking about that this was this big milestone and we we're about to hit 100,000 we were so excited but the second she said that we were like oh when are we gonna hit 300,000 when are we yeah. gonna hit 400,000 like, oh we thought it was good we didn't realize it wasn't that good until she told us and then and then that was kind of sad. And so but I think funny also. it was funny. It was pretty funny. And like, I'm glad that we can laugh at it. And I'm glad that we could at the time as well. And I think having each other definitely like helps because if someone's taking it so seriously, we're going to be like, hey, what the hell's wrong with you? It's just Instagram. One thousand percent. But well, my favorite saying, it's just life. Yeah, it's just life. Oh, well. But yeah, like that was us comparing ourselves to somebody else. And it was that culture of like, needing more and really like what likes are is like a validation you know they say that when we get likes on social media our brain has the same endorphin hit or whatever it is the same chemical hit that you get when you're gambling and yeah, that you get when you so play the gross. pokies it's, it's just yeah really it's like, crazy it's built to play on like all of our worst quality all of our worst qualities so at this point in Instagram, like, you know, up until a certain point, we were still kind of just like putting out photos that like felt right to us. But then eventually, you know, we noticed the accounts around us that were really like starting to grow were these kind of super polished, super edited airbrush photos of perfect girls with their perfect skin and their perfect hair and all these things that we weren't and that they weren't either, let's be honest, but that's what they were putting out there. And it just became this really, like, this edited place that wasn't making us feel good anymore. And we didn't feel like we could compete with these people that were coming up on Instagram. And we didn't really know if we wanted to. So it wasn't, like, really a conscious choice that we stopped posting. But I think it was just, like, it got to this place where we were overthinking what we were posting we were overthinking the photo. We were overthinking the caption. Like, I remember... We were overthinking the edit. Like, who overthinks an edit? Come on, people. Like, totally. It would take us, like, even if we had photo and caption, then, like, we'd spend, like, 45 minutes being like, should I have a pink tinge or should I have a blue tinge? And oh. we'd go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it was just, like, 
ridiculous that this was what started to consume our time. And not to mention, like, we started to become consumed with how many likes a photo was getting, how many comments a photo was getting. And it, it got to this point where we would know that if in the first minute or five minutes we didn't have, like, 20 likes or 100 likes or whatever it was, we knew that the photo wasn't going to do well enough and we would delete it. Yeah, like it just became this numbers game. And, and how embarrassing is that to admit? Like we deleted photos because we didn't think people were going to like them enough. Oh, like, like I think on the video that we said like one or two times, but in reality, we did it all the time. We would delete photos all the time if they weren't doing well. And we'd be like, should we upload them later? Was it the time that we uploaded them or was it the content? Like, what do you think? And we would analyze it. And like, it was particularly scary for us as well because like, this was our business. Like this was, at that point, it was just like the two of us in How to Live working with brands and that was our income. And so it was like, a, a kind of like, uh, what's that? I'm doing this action you're, with you're my hands. You're tugging, pulling. I'm, I'm giving and I'm push taking. Push and pull, yeah. a give and take. Yeah, push and pull, give <laughs> and take, all those things. You know, where like we didn't want to post, but at the same time it was our income, so we kind of had to. So then we would only be posting like these really gross like promo posts. We didn't really want to do that either, but we had gotten ourselves into a situation where that was our job and we had to. Well, isn't that the thing about social media now is that like, you know, so many people see being an influencer is their job and – it kind of consumes you like before your job was your nine to five or you know it was like in these confined hours but now having social media and that's what we hear from so many people that we talk to that are running small businesses Mm -hmm. is like you know I don't have the mental space to run a business and constantly be thinking about social media on top of that as well let alone in your personal life and I also just think it's so fascinating how it's trickled down to like every facet of like like every industry so like I just went on my yoga teacher training and like we had a session on that like amidst the like beautiful like philosophy meditation like emotional sessions that we were having we had a session on Instagram and like I I completely understand why we did that and fully fully recognize that that is a valid thing to do but I just think that it's so weird and kind of sad that like if you want to be something now, you have to have a presence on Instagram. And like now all my yoga friends are going and starting yoga Instagrams and I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah, but okay, to be fair, I totally understand what you're saying. But to be fair, like, you know, back in the day, the equivalent of that would have been just like a regular marketing course or how to build a website. And I definitely think that there is something in Instagram and there's definitely, you know, cool element about it that you can use it to grow a brand out of nothing or you know educate people if you use it in the right way and we'll get to that because we really do want to talk about the positives of Instagram because we know there are some as well and hopefully we'll see more of those right before we stopped posting I remember there were like so many things and occasions and like even holidays that we would go on these awesome experiences that we were having and we would just like basically ruin them by Instagramming so much and trying to get like as much content as we could out of these things. Oh my God, the holidays we ruined. This is actually something we were chatting about with Elise Tran recently on our episode with her. And it's just like crazy because you're at this, you're on this beautiful holiday. You have this beautiful beach in front of you and all you're doing is taking photos of it. Yeah, like we were those really annoying girls that you see that you walk past and you point out, but then later you are them that are like, making their friends and boyfriends and whatever just like sit there and take photos and we would outfit change and like you even see it now like when you go to a cafe like if you go to like a very like instagrammable cafe which is basically every cafe in melbourne and sydney and everywhere else let's be real like before people start eating their food when it gets put down the first thing they do is take a photo oh my god the other day i saw two girls They'd gotten up from their table with their plates of food and then walked over to a nearby tree and they were holding the plate of food in front of the tree and I'm laughing, but I have been them. Yeah, like, we have done that. Yeah, when we are in Bali, we went to this like really gorgeous cafe. It was like all pastel, so pretty. And I like took a photo and then I started to walk in. Like I just took a photo of the entryway. And then when we got in, all the girls that I was with were like, oh my God, did you see those people having a photo shoot outside? And I was like, nah. And like there was like this whole photo shoot outside, but honestly, I hadn't even noticed because like been there so many times and I didn't even care. Yes, standard what's new next. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so it was just like 
I don't know, we were just spending so much time on this platform and investing so much in it. It felt like it wasn't true to us anymore and it didn't, it, it wasn't servicing us in a positive way. Can I actually throw in a really interesting stat that I found before? Sure. Um, there was a 2017 study done by the Royal Society for Public Health in the UK and they surveyed almost 1,500 people aged 14 to 24 on how certain social media platforms impact their mental health. And can you guess what the one that they found impacts mental health in the worst possible way? Twitter. Was that a joke? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Instagram. Um, and actually, there was one platform that they found that actually positively impacts only oh. one positively impacts and let's be fair this was before podcasting because i think that would be definitely can i guess yeah pinterest youtube no way youtube negatively impacts my life i lose hours on that thing evident by the sunday afternoon i just spent looking at the most eerie and gruesome videos to have ever been taken well this is the thing is that another part of the survey said that the people most negatively affecting their mental health with social media or people that spent more than two hours a day on it. So I guess that means if you're using YouTube and less than two hours a day, it seems to potentially have a positive impact. I mean, when I read that, I thought, oh, that makes sense because I wasn't thinking like YouTube whole of like crap. Yeah. I was thinking about like, you know, when you watch yeah. makeup tutorials and you can actually use it for useful things, just like That's fair. podcasts are like, you know, you can use them to educate yourself like you all are right now. How funny is, did I just interrupt you? No, go. Ahead. How funny is the new, like, I don't know how new it is, like the timer on iPhone, the way they tell you how much time you spend on your phone every day. Oh, mine doesn't pop up like it does for other people. It it is sickening. What has yours popped up for you? It pops up every week and says some hours that like I don't even know. Like it's upwards of four hours a day. It's disgusting. Uh, I'm that, so humiliated. That you use on social media? No, just like on my phone in general. But like, yeah, what else are you doing on your phone other than social media? Not that much. Well, it's interesting because when, when we stop posting on social media, I really stopped using Instagram altogether. Like... I mean, so yeah, we got to this point, as we said, that we were just so over posting. We were so over, we were so mentally exhausted by yeah. this whole game we were playing of do we post? What do we post? What do we write? What do we filter? How many people are going to like it? And we were just done with it. Yeah, like if I think back to that time and like how I was feeling mentally, like I would just say like, I felt pretty shit about myself. And just, yeah, like mental like, exhaustion. Like as if my worth was based on how many likes we were getting on Instagram. That's pretty, like, that's that's where we got to, I would say. Definitely. And so we just kind of stopped posting. And, and I personally started to use Instagram less. You know, I think I actually around that time deleted the Facebook app off my phone, which I know a lot of people have done. Yeah, I've done that. It's great. And I even went a step further. And until I, you discover Facebook.com. I was about <laughs> to say until I went a step further and then I blocked Facebook.com and I, I blocked all these websites off your iPhone, which, which you can do really easily. Um, and yeah, not going on social media meant that like I didn't find myself lost in these holes. You know, when you just like, you're, you're on your phone and you go in and you, you're even just going to do something like check when someone's birthday is on Facebook or you're going to check where somebody is right now on Instagram and then two hours later you look up and you're like, what was I doing again? Yeah, and I do think that that's quite funny because Steph and I are five years apart and like I don't necessarily view those things as a waste of time if they did make me feel good. So like rather than getting off Instagram, I like did a huge cull of mine and just like started unfollowing all these people that I felt like weren't serving me. And I just flooded my Instagram with like people that I loved and people I thought were doing really cool things like celebrities that like shared the same values as mine or like body posse panda is like an absolute favorite or just other people that like make you smile. And that way, if I do get lost in an hour, like great, I actually don't mind spending my time that way like on a Sunday afternoon if I have time yeah I mean I think for me now I do follow a lot more accounts um that I do get a lot out of but at the time I just needed a break like I needed a really solid break and instead 
of doing that instead of going on social media I would like you know watch an episode of something or watch a movie and even though you know to the outside that might you weren't going for a walk in nature sorry no not at the time I wasn't but we'll get to that later but maybe sometimes I was I didn't have a dog then yet but you know like even if I was feeling lazy I could watch tv or you know do something there was just like a difference to me and like doing something with intention like I am intentionally sitting down to watch an hour episode of something whereas like feeling that lack of control that this like gambling site essentially pulled me into and away from you know and and lost all control in that way that was really what I think made me feel really bad about myself yeah and for me I think it was just like this sense of presence that like I feel when I'm not using Instagram versus when I am. So like a really extreme version of this was when I was in Bali for three weeks, I was pretty much off my phone. Like I think maybe I spent like two or three days where I was like, okay, I'll Insta story my day today. But other than that, my phone stayed inside my room and like, wow, did I notice such a difference? Like when I was experiencing something cool, I was thinking about experiencing something cool I was not thinking about like oh I need to capture this for a photo so I can upload it later and like that's a big difference for me that I've seen that like just like it has enhanced my enjoyment of things so much like if I have a beautiful plate of food put down in front of me wow I get to enjoy this beautiful plate of food you know it's not like about putting it on my Instagram well and just like moments in general that are happening every day and like sometimes you don't even see something because you had a phone screen in front of you you know like when you like oh the amount of my friends that have gotten married that I haven't really seen because I've had a phone screen in front of me (laughs) exactly because you didn't actually watch it happen you watched it via a phone screen and then you know yeah you you have it to watch later but there's just really something in enjoying something as it happens and not being so worried about trying to capture that moment 100% so then bringing it back to like when we decided that we wanted to start posting again, I guess it did come from that place of like, okay, we've, we've had such a break. Like we really have had time to like look at how we feel and like what we want to utilize social media for. And like, and I think that there is so much that like, there is so much good that can come of it. And we were like, we want to be part of that goodness. We want to be part of that change. And we want to really like, own this discussion of it is a curated edit and it is not something to be envious of and we had an instagrammable life and we can tell you firsthand that it ain't so hot and it just isn't a real thing and and that's when we were like hey we have the power to change this we have the power to be posting things on instagram and sharing how we feel with people and sharing that you know, we're all just the same. And like, even though, you know, like this person has this job and this person goes on these holidays, we're all just humans at the end of the day. And we all have the same struggles, like whether it's celebrities or anyone, we're all just kind of doing our best, living our best lives. LBL. And also like, there are so much, there are so many causes that we believe in as you would know if you've been listening to previous episodes. Um, And so it's like, we're like, we could be using Instagram as a way to like really educate and champion these causes. And I think like that's definitely also been a big driver that we're like, okay, this is like missed utilization here of like, you know, we could be talking to people about what we care about and really educating them. And using our following for good and to drive change um, and yeah to make a difference because we have built up this following and we're grateful that we have all these people that you know care about us and that was why we I think we're even scared like to pivot a little bit because we were like super scared yeah like we don't want to lose these followers that we've built up we don't want people to be like oh I'm not interested in them anymore and then we started to realize that's okay if people are no longer interested in what we're putting out there you know better to have a smaller more engaged following and be making an impact on those people than have you know a million followers who are only following us because we post about bikini photos. bodies yeah um but you don't want to see these bodies in a bikini so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like you just mentioned losing followers like we have started losing followers now that we've started posting like in a kind of different direction but with that 
we're gaining people that um, what we're doing is speaking to and those are the people that we want to be able to talk to, not the people who aren't interested. People who aren't interested, they can click on follow. I don't care. So why haven't we been posting that much since we relaunched? Yeah. So this is an interesting one. So we kind of posted two months ago like, we're back, we're here, bigger and better than ever, all this stuff. And like, and we really meant it. Like it was super authentic at the time. And in the beginning we were like posting. But um, then we just stopped. And I think like not that we stopped, like we now we're posting maybe like two or three times a week. But I think um, there's just, even though like we're owning the conversation as we say, there's still like that scared element of like, what if people don't like us? Well, and there's still that, you know, I can't help it as much as I'd like not to care at all. Once we've posted, I keep going back to check the likes and the comments. Oh, 100%. And if it does well, I can't help but feel better about myself. And, and if then it does I get, badly. And then I get angry at myself and I'm like, why are you letting that make you feel better about yourself? You're being ridiculous. You're being what you don't want to be. Yeah. And if it does badly, I mean, I don't care nearly as much as I used to um, but I'm still like you know damn you Instagram algorithm why aren't you showing our photos to more people you know why aren't people liking this enough why aren't people commenting and it's just like this big mind fuck yeah it's a full mind fuck that's a great way to describe it sorry uh, to our mom if you're listening because she doesn't like when we say fuck on our podcast but yeah it is because it's like you can be rational I guess like it's like with any emotion that you feel but like you can be rational and you can say like this is what I care about these are my values my values are not Instagram I do not care but then like it still just like strikes a chord with you wait it does make you feel a little bit shit. Well, this is why it was really interesting. You know, we heard the other day that Instagram is trialing. I think it's in Canada. They've started to trial stopping showing how many likes are on a photo. So the person who posted it will be able to see still, but other people won't be able to see. And like, I mean, how do you feel about that? Because for me, I think it's awesome to see Instagram taking a step in the direction of, or in the direction away from gambling where it's all about like your winnings and it's more just about enjoying the photos that people post and it's almost like doing a full circle back to the beginning of what Instagram really was. I do think it's awesome um, because I do think that like, I, I think that likes wouldn't be likes if people can't see your likes. Like if only 10 people like my photo, but no one else can see that, I really don't care. It's like yeah. when 100 people like my photo and everyone can see, oh, okay, yeah, that's what I want. You know, that's the drug. But um, to say that it's awesome of Instagram, like I don't know how pure their intentions are because like s someone was telling us before um, how, you know, they were saying that people, exactly what we're talking about right now, people are afraid of Instagram because they don't want to get less likes. So they're not posting. So it's making people post less because they're too embarrassed of how little likes they're getting. So like in that way, like they're not trying to solve our mental health problems, unfortunately. Well, at least it means that they are listening and that we are driving change. At, you know, we, the community of the world and of Instagram are driving change. And that's kind of cool to think that, you know, what other ways can we drive change if they don't necessarily care for the good of humanity but they're going to listen if we all scream and shout loud enough and if we boycott and if we you know make it heard what we want then they're going to listen and that's pretty cool so like I think you know being more authentic and what people posting is really cool I think I mentioned this um in the video that we did that I saw a girl that we actually were on a job with many many years ago um at the Zoe Report when we were living in LA. Her name's Poppy Jamie um, and she actually founded the brand Pop and Suki and she is an advocate for this and she, you know, likes people to realize that Instagram isn't real life and she has on the top of her feed warning this is a curated feed and it's like things like that that I think are really important that, you know, it's like the cigarette packet, you know, like mm. seeing that it, it does change something like you know we, we do kind of need these reminders that even though it sounds so simple reminders that it is a curated feed what you're seeing is not real life totally and I think it's all well and good like we've had some awesome people writing to us on Instagram being like we love you guys don't feel pressure to post on Instagram it's so totally fine we get why you hate it and love them they're amazing but I think um I think that we we want to be part of the change 
And if that is true, then we need to be active in that and we need to be posting because if we stop posting, I don't think that that fixes anything because I don't think that the people who are posting a curated edit of their life are going to stop. But I think that it needs people like Poppy Jamies of the world and like Kristen Bell to like be putting content out that makes you feel really good to counteract because I think then only then will we start to see real change. Jamila Jamil as well. She's amazing. She's like so real and what she posts is just incredible. Yeah, totally. And also Hannah Bronfman recently completely opening up about her journey to um, having a baby. Like you see these people that are just like pouring their hearts out and really opening up their lives. And I think those are the people who are making the change. And I want us to do that too. And I also think that like, you know, that's where the positive of Instagram and of social media comes in is that like, you know, it can make us feel really connected. Like as humans, when we have problems, we feel terrible about them, you know, when when you kind of keep them inside. But when you realize there's a whole community out there of people who have the same problems as you, whether it's an eating disorder, whether it's, you know, anything, it, it, that connection with someone else and that shared story is really incredible. And I think that social media does have the power to do that. And Instagram is a really powerful tool for connecting people in that way. Just in the way that, you know, when we're talking about our feelings towards social media, other people kind of go, ah, you know, they breathe a sigh of relief and they're like, me too. I also feel like that. This is so cool that we can bond and connect over this. Totally. So how are we going to do that though? How are we going to like use social media in a way that like makes sense to us and like make and a way that makes us feel comfortable. I, I mean, feel like there needs to be like, there needs to be boundaries there. I you think like video is a really powerful tool. Um, you know, like when we posted that video the other day on Instagram and we were just like talking about how we felt about it. I feel like a photo you can kind of fake. You can Photoshop, you can edit it, you can overthink it, you can make it look like something it isn't. Whereas a video is a lot more candid. Well, and even I do think that there's something in the fact that they don't show you how many likes your photo, your video gets. They only show you how many views it's had. That's and true. Then like that also, that makes me feel better. Yeah, you true. Know? So maybe there's something in video. I also was thinking about it and I was thinking like, you know, below a caption. Like, you know, because we like to write funny things in a caption. We also like to make someone laugh and feel entertained. But like, you know, maybe at the bottom of each caption, it's how you're feeling in that moment. So it's like, you know, this is me speaking at this big event and like, you know, make a joke about it in the caption, but then also say, I worked really hard to get here. I really didn't feel like going on stage this day and talking about this. Mm, Um, I'm so nervous right now. I screwed up royally when I was talking. I have total imposter syndrome and I don't feel like I should be here. You know, like adding in those kind of thoughts where, okay, we can have, the the funny and you know the witty things as well and then also just giving like total real talk to go along with it yeah totally I uh, like that well we'd love to hear everybody's feedback if you do have any ideas um definitely you know write yeah, them to and us like, and like what have you been doing like how social media make you feeling and making you feel like I'm not speaking English today and um like are there any are there any things that you've like implemented in your life like I've heard of people like deleting the Instagram app for like you know a day and then downloading it the next day and then deleting it and then downloading it which I think is that's a headache I mean it wouldn't work for me let's be honest but it's interesting I think that there are a lot of ways out there that we could kind of come to that that we could use Instagram for good so the future of social media have we talked about that or do we want to talk about it I feel like we've yeah I feel like we've talked about it yeah same I feel like I'm feeling good about it I'm feeling good about a conversation um yeah so I think you know this has been a good chat I think there is hope for social media um I think I you know I would love for us to like try and sit down with somebody at Instagram and talk about this Mm. hopefully we're going to be in the US later in the year so we can try to reach out to someone at Instagram if anyone listening knows anyone at Instagram please let us know because I definitely think that there's, you know, much more discussion to be had around this and hopefully Instagram is is going to listen to what people want and is going to be part of this change and, and part of connecting people in a meaningful way and not destroying our mental health. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's do quick fires. <laughs> to the quick fires. 
Um, so we themed our quick fires today, actually. Usually it's just like a bunch of random stuff that we write down and then we ask our guests. But today we thought it would be cool if we did them that are all like not things that you do on Instagram or like they have nothing to do with social media. So our first one, and we've written these, but we didn't think about our answers yet. So um, these are quick fires. The first one is what is your favorite thing to do outdoors? Um, ooh, my favorite thing to do outdoors is go to the beach. Mm, going to the beach is nice. Mine is going hiking, which is what I was talking about before when I said we'll talk about my outdoor activities later. Um, I used to hate hiking with a passion and my boyfriend Renan has gotten me into it and I actually love it. Although we argue the whole time whenever we're going up a mountain or something, we argue like the whole way and I tell him I hate it, but really I like it. Oh, uh, sorry. Mine's go on the beach in the afternoon with a bottle of rosé. Mm, How nice does that sound? That's really nice. Um, do you want to do this one? I can't really see that far. Oh. The least Instagram-worthy food that you love to eat. That's such a good question. <laughs> um, um, uh, mm. um, okay, I'll answer for Panther first. Panther loves to eat carrots, although I have Instagrammed that before because he just loves them so much. It's so cute. Um, I like, if I'm being like super naughty, like not naughty in terms of like um, eating shit because I don't think that that's naughty, but like just like no nutrition. I really like porridge with brown sugar, just like at home, just porridge, brown sugar. It looks like cuck, but it yeah. tastes delicious. That's not Instagram worthy. That's a good one. Um, a lot of nights I just make myself spaghetti with like Pomodoro sauce and cheese. And that's like really my favorite meal to eat. And Probably not very Instagram worthy. Mm, good one. Um, what is the best part of your day? And you better not be checking your phone. Mm, the best part of my day. Mm, I forgot I was meant to be thinking about my answer too. I just thought I was asking you. The this. best part of my day is yoga. It's just like me and my mat. And it's usually early in the morning and everyone else is asleep. And it's just quiet. And it's so nice. Ooh, I feel like going to yoga. <laughs> well, you can go soon because we're about to wrap up. But my the best part of my day is when I open the door in the morning and Panther is standing there and he's so happy to see me. And often he'll like jump into my bed and we just cuddle. Oh, Panther cuddles. Yummy. So good. Next one. Um, who's the last person you waved at IRL? IRL means in real life which I found out that lot, not a lot of people knew that recently. Really? Yeah. Who doesn't know that? Three people have said it to me in the last month. That's crazy. Like I say IRL and then they say, what? what's that? Maybe they recognize it written, but not like out loud. Maybe. Um, the last person I waved at IRL was a baby and it waved back at me. When? Um, it was Kim's baby. When? Um, so we like, do oh, you regularly specifically wave? When? No, like they said to me, oh, he waves now. So I waved at him and then he waved back. It was the other day at, at Jude's birthday. Um, the last person I waved to, I think, was our mum down the corridor at work. <laughs> so we share an office space with her. We sure do. Um, okay, my turn? Yeah. What is the last thing before you go to sleep at night that you do that doesn't involve a phone? Because we all know checking a phone is the last thing we all do. Um... Oh my God, I feel like I'm such a yoga freak. I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> I think it's it's fair because you just got back from this retreat. So like at the moment you're like in it. Okay, well, I've been wearing a crystal in my bra. Um, sorry, what now? I've been wearing a crystal <laughs> in my bra. <laughs> How have you not told me about this? Well, a couple of people on, the, um, on our retreat were doing it. And like, I just thought that that's such a clever way to carry crystals around with you. What For what purpose is it in your bra though? Because where else would I put it that it could touch my skin and stay there? Why does it have to touch your skin and stay there? Like I'm just like soaking up all its juju and it's soaking up all of mine. It sounds like you're trying to like grow your boobs by like putting a crystal in your bra. No, like they're just, it's just a good way to keep it. Like, because I don't have any jewelry with crystals on it. I don't want anyone else to touch it. Well, I guess it's better than in your underwear. Well, my underwear's not tight enough that I could put a crystal and it would stay. Um, anyway, so I take it out. Or I take off my bra and then it comes falling out onto my wooden floor and then I pick it up and I kiss it and I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's a good one. Uh, my last thing I do actually is I use this blue light because I have 
horrible acne and my dad I mean our dad we share a dad he do is a, we yeah we do oh, I was gonna make like a parent trap joke but I couldn't remember any lines from it um um ooh, neither no neither Hallie we're ha- like <laughs> twins <laughs> um anyway what was I saying oh yeah um our dad is like obsessed with blue no he's not obsessed he's with not. blue no no our dad is obsessed with skincare and helping me fix my skin so recently he bought me this blue light I can't remember what it's called but it's like a blue laser light thing it's like a blue led light um and you like hold it on your skin you hold it on your skin for like five minutes before you go to bed every night um so that is what I've been doing and it's really helping. Oh, it's so good. It's I want to use magical. it. Can I come over and use it? Yeah, you can use it whenever you want. Um, so thank you so much for listening. That is almost our whole episode. But before we go, we are going to answer a question from a fan. Our question comes from Lee on Instagram. And she has asked, why did you call your shoe label tubes? Ah, what a question, Lee. People always ask us this and they like think that it's going to be like the coolest answer and the honest answer is um, we were actually going to call it two shoes um, but Steph's boyfriend Renan is a lawyer and he said that we would never get the trademark for that. And the reason two is obviously because like how two live and we were like our brand has to always be something to do with two. Um, And so we were like damn and then we started just like thinking of a million words that have the word two in it not that many words have the word two in it so then we started making up words we made up the word tubes it sounded like tubes we were like that is so cool we could have our shoes come in tubes so then we called our shoes our shoe label tubes and our first production like that first collection we launched the shoes came in tubes and then we realized that people don't sell shoes in tubes for a reason because mm. it's stupid and logistically does not work. So we And the changed. tubes are breaking. The tubes are breaking. Also, like, we wanted people to reuse them, but they were kind of ugly, so they weren't reusing them. It just wasn't good. And that's why tubes has a W in it. And people freak out when they hear us say it because they're like, oh, my God, I've been saying tubes. But yeah. we're like, no, like, get it, like, two, like, two. And weirdly, only Americans can really say it properly because they say two. Yeah, like so many people we work with say tubes and we're like, tubes, no, tubes. No, guys, it's tubes and they still say tubes. So bad. So thanks for the question, Lee. Hope that answered it for you. Have an awesome week. Stay off social media, kids. Or don't and just use it positively. Ah, bye.